Hi right, guys, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, welcome to Pure MMT for the 100% beyond the memes. Very important. Okay. Um, this this uh, whole uh, MMT thing with the little memes, you know, <laughs> they're wonderful, but they don't make any sense in the real world, unfortunately. All right, so let's go back in time, and we're going to go over some of the posts that I had on Pure MMT, and we're going to cover it. Uh, we had Natasha Kelton, Stephanie Kelton, but I call her Natasha because she's a comrade, she's a commie. Uh, Natasha Kelton went on, on TV and without shame, embarrassment, or nothing like that. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, we can actually print more. We can print more. Uh, and get inflation down. Wow. Wow. Okay. Remember the times when MMT was like, yeah, sure, government can control inflation by spending less. Remember that? Yeah, so don't worry about it. That's what they used to say. Now, Natasha Kelton is saying, you can actually spend money and reduce inflation pressures. Stephanie Kelton. Now, this post... Uh, was mainly from uh, Edward Delzio, right? He used to be part of Pure MMT. Um, so I, I posted it here. And, uh, you know, he saved the tape. <laughs> he saved the tape. And this was uh, on MSNBC, the last word, right? Now, as I have said repeatedly over the years, MMT doesn't understand inflation. MMT will never see inflation coming, which they didn't, okay? So clearly they don't understand inflation. Uh, MMT has no plan for inflation when it comes, and they don't. They, in fact, she wants to print more. These are her words. <laughs> These are not my words. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're going to spend more. Okay. Well, whatever you say, Natasha. Comrade Natasha. And no matter what happens... MMT will always say print more, more, I want more, print more, you got inflation, print more, okay, now I've told you this going back to 2018, I think it was, right, 19, 20, now we're in 21, I'm still telling you this, and everything that I've said has come true true everything everything they didn't see inflation coming when it got here right they didn't understand it they came up with excuses and instead of them saying that oh yeah you know uh, we can spend less what did they say well we can spend more okay we can spend more they don't understand inflation so don't bother with these people because they're completely clueless. All right. So let's go to the next post. Um, this one is an interesting one because, remember, you know, we got helicopter money. This is what they wanted from the be beginning. Now, they may not want you to stay home and get helicopter money, but they wanted to just, you know, have you go to some place in your local town or city or whatever, uh, you know, punch punch in and then punch out and then you get paid. They call that a job guarantee. Well, as we all know, a job is not just showing up, punching a little card and then punching out and saying, okay, I did a job. That's not a job. A job is something that is productive, that is going to pr produce a profit, that, it, that it's, it's, it's going to create something that the public wants. Okay? And if they want it, they're going to pay for it and they're going to produce a profit. That's the way it works. Okay, now to say that the private sector is not doing such a good job at uh, producing something that the public wants, when I say public, I mean the general public, not government, uh, I think it's, it's asinine. It's stupid. It's just dumb to, to suggest that the private sector is not doing a good job and hey, you know, hey, we can do this by printing money and we're going to be more productive. No, you're not going to be more productive. That's silly. That's silly. So that means a job guarantee is not a job. It's just 
free money for all. It's helicopter money is what it is, right? Milton Friedman is like, oh, you know, you want to create more jobs? Okay, give spoons to those with shovels, and well, there you go. <laughs> You're not going to be more productive, right? So, again, the, you know, Varoufakis, th I think, said it best, that he should have took up linguistics instead of mathematics and economics. <laughs> Because when he went to Brussels, they, they didn't give a shit about economics or mathematics. And, it, and it's the same thing here. MMT doesn't care about mathematics, economics, or anything like that. It's all about linguistics. If I call it a job guarantee, then what's going to fire off in your head? Oh, there's going to be a job. Well, a job has to be productive. It has to produce uh, an income and profit. Right? Not printing money and here you go. <laughs> That's not a job guarantee. That's not a job, period. So let's see what this helicopter money did for us. The CARES Act. Oh, my God. The, sounds so good. Again, linguistics, right? The CARES, they care about me. Oh, my God. And I'm not talking about uh, not deficit spending and helicopter money. That the pr that's not the problem. Okay. We spent a little over a year, in a little over a year, $6 trillion dollars. Six trillion dollars. On top of that, we also spent another three trillion in tax collections. So for a total of nine trillion dollars. Now, I want you to understand what that means. Total GDP in real terms is about 19.5. I think now maybe 20, whatever it is. It's about 20 trillion dollars. You just deficit spent, or government just spent. Nine trillion dollars, including tax revenues, in a little over a year. Okay, that is about fifty percent of GDP in one year. That included helicopter money. What is the result of that? You know, getting back to the inflation, one of the most loved words by everyone is the word transitory it's transitory transit it, it plugs a lot of holes what do i mean by that well the politicians want to call it transitory right they don't want to scare you hey don't worry about it it's transitory the inflation is transitory don't worry about it mosler and mmt want you to think that hey it's transitory don't worry about it it's nothing because they never saw inflation coming it's transitory. They're happy about it. Economists that never saw COVID coming, they never saw the fucking collapse coming, and the only thing they can come up with is just print some more, right? That's the, you go to you, you, you go to college, you go to university, you get your, uh, your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD in economics, and the best thing you can fucking come up with is, well, anytime we have some shit that happens in the economy, just print. You don't need a PhD to come up with that. And yet, that's how silly these people are. The only solution to all problems is print. Well, a child could do that. Okay, and that's why I call them incubator economists. They're incubator. They, their theories, their nice little papers, they work great inside of an incubator where you put little babies, you know, where nothing is disturbing them. It works great. But in reality, it's garbage. All they're going to do in the end of the day is just print. And they're going to they're gonna give those printed up digits to the top 5% where they're going to go out and speculate w with it. They're going to backstop risk in the, in, the, in the asset classes, stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate. They're going to backstop all that risk. Okay? And those liabilities are going to go on your shoulders. On your shoulders. Well... How can I prove that? Well, it's either going to be through inflation or it's going to be through taxation. Okay? Or both. So what do I mean by that? By the way, the economists also love the word transitory. You'll never hear the word transitory associated with real income. They'll never tell you, oh, look, you know, real income is rising, but hey, don't worry about it, it's transitory. They would never tell you that. Never. That word would never be used with real income. It won't. Linguistically, <laughs> that's suicide. 
Okay, so again, you have to be a linguistic to figure out what they're telling you. Now, look at this chart here. Okay. Any new home that is being built, it's now gone. It's this red line right here. It's now non-existent. We are not building any more homes that are going to be worth, uh, that are going to be you know, $200,000 or less. They're finished. In fact, if you look at the three, 300000 and less, it's nosediving. Soon they're going to become obsolete. That is inflation, my friends. That is inflation. In fact, home prices are up 24% year over year. I think today may may came down a little bit less. It doesn't matter. Okay, that just shatters the dream shatters the dreams of the bottom 50%. I'm not even going to say about the middle class, the 95%. Forget about that. Let's just say the bottom 50%. It's 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 gut wrenching. They wanted to buy a home. Oh, guess what? It's twenty four percent more than it was last year. Good luck. Hey, by the way, we're going to give you a fifteen dollar minimum raise uh, uh, now. Well, any any kind of benefit that that fifteen dollars an hour that was going to make, it just got wiped out. And then some more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fifteen dollars. You think fifteen dollars an hour is going to make up for? Uh, 24% more on home prices? How about rents? Rents are up 14%. Everybody's going to have to pay, who's renting is going to have to pay, and on average. Now remember, some places are up 25%, like in Miami, in California, they're up 20, rents are up 25%. Gut-wrenching for the bottom 50%. Okay. The only thing that was transitory in reality was real disposable personal income, which is negative now, by the way. Okay, it's negative. Negative. Okay, here's stimulus one, stimulus two, stimulus three. Oh, look, the CARES Act. They're really caring for us. Yeah, yeah, they sure are. <laughs> there goes your wages right down the tubes. While inflation is in home is up 24%, there's no more $200,000 or less new homes being built. 300 is going to be soon, uh, you know, extinct as well. Now you're going to have to go out and pay 14% more in rent this year. And real disposable income is negative. The CARES Act. And what is Natasha Kelton's uh, solution to all of these problems? Yes, yes, yes. We can print some more. <laughs> yes, let's print some more. Wow. Wow, are they completely out of touch with reality or what? Look at this apartment. Okay, look at this right here. Look at this. All of Florida is on fire, not only from COVID. 25% rise in rents. Okay, this is rent estimates. Uh, I think this is uh, Phoenix. All right, look at California. Okay, look at here. <coughs> Disaster. Disaster. And this is exactly what I was gonna, what I've been saying for a very long time that you cannot print a dollar out of thin air and think that you're going to save it. You're not. You're not. That dollar is going to end up with the top five percent. They're going to take that dollar and they're going to go speculate in asset prices. Stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate. And you're going to see asset price inflation. And the, the more we print, the richer they become, the poorer we become. This is the uh, Case Schiller's uh, composite <coughs> uh, in uh, housing. Look at that. It's literally vertical. Vertical. It's going straight up. Transitory. Let me explain to you what transitory means. Transitory means that if, let's say, inflation does come down, and it will at some point, do you think home prices are going to come down and rents? 
they won't. They won't come down. They'll just stay wherever they are, and from that point, they will start to rise 2, 3, 4%, whatever. That's what transitory means. It means you take it in the yin-yang, and then you'll just take it less in the yin-yang. That's what transitory means. Transitory doesn't mean that, hey, you know, home prices are up 24% and, okay, now it's over, now it's down 24%. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And Colin Roach, is, a, is a, he's another one of those, uh, you know, incubator economist, self-proclaimed monetary expert, whatever he thinks he is. Oh, it's just transitory. Trans- he's been saying transitory. <laughs> And every single month, it keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's transitory. It is transitory. Okay. (laughs) Thank you for your transitory comments. Bye-bye. See ya. You're worthless. Yeah, Colin. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, Colin. Sure. Bye-bye, my friend. Sure. The only thing that was transitory was real disposable personal income. Surprise. Like I told you, it's savings for the top 5%, liabilities for the bottom 95%. And the bottom 50% just got crushed. Okay? And it's not going to go down when inflation comes down. It'll just not be as bad. It won't be vertical. How about that? So any benefits, any benefits that might have been with a rise of minimum wage to $15 just got Wiped the fuck out. Boom. Just like that. That quickly. CARES Act. MMT. Print to inflation. Thank you, Natasha. Warren Mosler. Oh, it's supply chain. It's supply chain. It's a it's supply chain. It's transitory. It's, it's, don't 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 panic. Yeah, you never saw it coming, my friend. You never saw inflation coming. And now you're trying to save face by using this word transitory, trying to throw mud in people's eyes to save face. Garbage. Economic garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. MMT is garbage. Okay? That plain and simple. Anyway. um, One last thing I want to tell you. I want you to understand something about unemployment. You're hearing numbers of 5.4 unemployment rate. Okay, this is the rate. The unemployment rate in the context of the labor force participation. If the labor force participation shrinks... A 5.4% unemployment rate, okay, the rate is not necessarily good. In fact, it's not good at all. If you saw labor force participation rising and then you were getting 5.4%, let's say somewhere up here, then that's a vastly different story. If labor force participation was all the way up here, unemployment rate would not, with the current people employed right now, would not be 5.4%. It would be much, much higher. Okay? So, I see a lot of people, they look at the charts, they point at the charts, they post them, and they don't understand what they mean. They really don't understand what they mean. But they love talking about them. They love pushing some stupid thing that comes up in their head. And uh, they don't understand rate of change. Rate of change is something that humans, they they don't understand. An Airbus flies, when I pull back on a stick, it's a rate of change. Meaning if I pull it back a centimeter, it'll just keep pitching up, pitching up, pitching up, pitching up until the airplane stalls. That's a rate of change. It's a constant. Okay, The rate of change is very important. It's very important. Right now it's going straight down. That's fine. That's great. But if you start seeing labor force participation rise, what you're going to see is the rate 
of dissent right now, it will start to go back up. If people are not getting jobs. Okay? So if we were at more normal levels of labor force participation, unemployment rate would be much, much higher. And don't give me a demographics kind of, uh, you know, uh, reason why it's this bad. That's not why, because millennials are bigger than boomers. It's not the boomers retiring. Uh, that's not the case. Millennials are a bigger demographic bunch than the boomers. And they're in prime lab uh, prime lab yeah, prime age labor force right now. So it's not that. You know that wonderful 3.4 percent unemployment prior to COVID. Oh my God, we're doing such this. We haven't seen numbers like this since 1960. And blah, right? That that hoopla, the hoopla. Oh yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah. That is in the context of a smaller labor force participation. It's not like these people don't live <laughs> on this uh, in this country. They're, they're still here. Okay, and it just got worse. And they're parading the 5.4 percent unemployment all the way down here with labor force participation, down to 61.7. So, please learn how to read charts, understand the charts, understand the linguistics of transitory. You'll never hear the word transitory <laughs> with uh, real wages. They'll never tell you that. Even though they were, the only thing that was transitory were wages, and thanks to helicopter money, we got inflation. And the inflation that CPI is reading 5.4 is telling you, it's not telling you the full story, because you, if you want to go buy a home, you're going to pay 24% more. If you want to rent a home, you're going to pay at least 14% more. Some places less, some places a lot, lot more. So try to understand these things, okay? That's why it's pure MMT for the 100% beyond the means. It's beyond the means. It's beyond the bullshit. Anybody can come up with a circular logical fallacy, put it out there, convince a bunch of know-nothings, and yes, we can print. We can print to inflation. And then inflation comes, yeah, it's okay, you print more. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you. Take care. I'll be making more of these videos. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.